Daz, we are here again today. Well, I'm here again today. Um, moved into my new house not long ago. Uh, it's all been up in the air, and I think that's um, one of the main reasons why we haven't had a chance to get me and Daz together again. But there's my lovely apron, looking pretty as ever, of course. Now that's going to be a permanent fixture. I do have a second one because I was lucky enough to be purchased two by the wonderful friend of mine who comes around every Tuesday to eat. But this one I want to preserve. The other one, um, I will wear every now and then, possibly. But I want to keep them in pristine condi condition. Because one thing I've noticed is, if I wash them, some of the corners are peeling and I don't want that to happen. So I'm trying to preserve them. So that one is literally going to be a permanent fixture up there, cooking with ash. But without further ado, we today have got ourselves a wonderful dish to cook. It is a beautiful, traditional, Italian spaghetti carbolognese. Even though it's not actually spaghetti, I'm using tagliatelle. But anyway, I'm going to turn you around and show you what we've got to make this episode's bolognese. Okay guys, so I've turned you around and I'm going to show you what we have. Obviously, salt and pepper, I have some mince, I've got some beef stock, I've got some tomato puree, I've got two onions cut in half ready to chop, I've got two giant garlic cloves, I've got two tins of tomato, I've got two packets of this tagliatelle, okay, it's fresh tagliatelle, so this is what we're going to be using. Um, we also have about a tablespoon of oregano and the same of parsley, dried parsley I'm using, and I here I have four bay leaves. I'm going to pick it up. Four bay leaves. Okay. Here I have four medium carrots shredded using a cheese grater. I have some spinach, baby spinach. And also, to go for the side, excuse the wire charging, uh, we got some cheesy garlic flatbread. So the bees are going to be the basic ingredients that you need to make today's I'm a tagliatelle bolognese. That's what I'm going to call it because it is tagliatelle. It's not spaghetti. So it's a tagliatelle bolognese. And of course, I actually forgot the main ingredient. And here it is, staring me right in the face. A bit of Diablo. Merlot. Red wine. 13.5%. Anything below 12 is a, a, a cider. <laughs> a grape cider, if you like. So always get above 12%. 12% or higher, especially if you're cooking, okay? Uh, this is my red wine of choice. This is what I always go for with red wine. And uh, so this is everything we have for today. Let's get to it. Okay, so I've got my knife, I've got my garlic and I've got my onions. I'm gonna shred up these uh, onions and put them in a little tub ready for frying. Now I'm gonna not do what I did last time. If any of you remember what happened last time, I'll put a link in the description. I shall indeed. Oh my god, I can't see. I'm blinded, I'm blinded by the onions, man. Blinded. Oh my god, oh, oh my goodness, I need a tea towel. Oh, tissue for my face. Uh, that's some strong onions. I don't normally cry when it comes to onions, okay, but um, oh my word. These ones are seriously like, whoo, they're attacking my face. Okay, next, I'm gonna. Crush this garlic with my flat side of the knife. And then I'm going to chop it very finely, or roughly actually, I'm going to chop it roughly. And then of course I'm going to do what I usually do. 
Those onions have really got to me, Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> salt, table salt. Plenty of that. Do not be shy, that's about a table tablespoon. A decent teaspoon of salt. Okay. And of course, I'm gonna paste this garlic up. <laughs> Lovely, lovely garlic right there. That'll do. Okay, next thing you want to do, get that heat into the pan. Full heat, full gas, whatever you're using. Splash of oil, not too much. Okay, let the heat get into that and get that sizzling. Lovely jubbly. So I've got my onions and my garlic ready there. Oh yeah. So we want to gently sweat off our onions and garlic. Okay, and then grab your meat. Don't be shy. Okay, it's it's only mince. It's not going to hurt you. And and do start breaking it up. Okay, yeah. Don't just chuck it in there in a massive chunk. Break it up. So then, it's got chunks. See that chunk? Go get rid of that chunk. Don't want no chunks. Okay. Break it up. Any chunks? Get rid of that chunk. This will cook quicker, more evenly, and you know, you won't get burnt bits, you won't get overcooked bits, you won't get big lumps of mince. Okay. So de-chunk your mince, always. Wash your hands. See how there's no massive chunks of mince in there and it's all nice and loose? That's why we break it up. That's why I break it up. You don't get these massive bits of meat all just congealed together in the cooking process, okay? And then you're sitting there going, trying to get the lumps out. A little bit like this one here, because I missed it. Okay, you see how it cooks and you get like a lump, but it, just give it a stir and it breaks apart from itself. It doesn't stay a massive cooked lump. And that's the point here. You get decent, nice, actual mince instead of basically just overcooked pulp. though how the mince is staying mincy right it's still staying in its strands little strands yeah some of them may break but it's not turning into a nasty ass pulp because you've sat there and had to mush it up <clears throat> okay so you know take care of your food treat it well gently stir it you don't want to mash this stuff up you want nice chunky bits of minced meat. I mean, look at that. It's it's supposed to be strandy. That's the point of minced meat. So don't don't sit there tearing it up with your spoon, stirring it in because you've just chucked the whole lump of mince in. Break it up. I'm scared. Okay. 
Now, some people will drain the fat, some people won't. I'm going to because this was actually quite high in fat content. Much better, look at that. Beautiful, right? Next, what you want to do is get your smarter puree, pierce a hole in the cap. Okay, ta da. We want about half this tube. Yeah, do about half. Stir this up nice and gently, get that sauce all around the mince. Wash your rabbit. Beef stock, stick that right in. Okay, jelly pie, splodge. Ooh, rich. Next, you want the wine. Crack that bad boy open. Oh, yeah. And yes, of course, if you like, some for the food, some for yourself, but uh, I don't drink. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is around 200 mils of wine. It's basically like one large glass. Straight in. Now, of course, you want to cook the wine off, so let that cook. Now, you know what? Let's make it 250 mils. <laughs> Definitely one large glass of wine right there. Okay. That's better. Next. You want to add your carrots, so get them straight in. Okay. Let's see. Woo, ah, there we go, lovely jubbly. Woo wee! Oh, I made a bit of a mess. Hey ho. <laughs> Wouldn't be home cooking if you didn't make mess. Right, then you want to add your tomatoes. Two whole tins. It may seem like a lot, but trust me, when you cook this down, which you need to do, follow my rules and recipes. Now that you've added the sauce, add your seasonings. Okay, so that's your tablespoon of oregano, tablespoon of parsley, Four bay leaves, salt, okay, have a teaspoon or so, lots of black pepper. Okay, you season now because you're trying to season the sauce, not the meat. Okay, if you season first, then you season the meat, you don't season the sauce. But here we're trying to season the sauce. Lots of black pepper, don't be shy. Now, Mix this together and let it stew. Nice and slowly, so let the heat go down. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed so those seasonings get all in combined with the sauce. And infuse their flavors as they should. Of course it is at this point you can add some peas, which I'm gonna do. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's basically it, okay? You just, you let this stew now for like a good 45 minutes. Hey guys, so 
We've reached the middle stage of our cooking episode today of our bolognese with the degolatelli and the baby spinach that we haven't got to yet. That's why it's the middle. Now we've got to wait for this sauce to reduce itself. Cook the white red wine. And now we've got to wait for this sauce to reduce itself and all the flavours to infuse, all that seasoning to get in there with the sauce. And now I'm going to put you on the flip side and we're going to time lapse because it's going to take about 45 minutes to reduce that sauce to a lovely consistency that I want and obviously it's going to be moments for you so I'll see you in a, in a tick or two 45 minutes <laughs> Okay guys, so I hope you've enjoyed that little time lapse there, but basically our bolognese is ready, it is done. The next part is, as you may have saw in the time lapse as well, I've got a pan on of water to boil, but our next step is to get these into oven. I've already put the oven on, it's preheating to 180 degrees. Uh, they take 12 minutes. Yep, 180 degrees. So I'm going to put these in the oven. Wow. It's cheesy and it's garlicky. It's going to be so good. So let's recap. So I've just put those garlic cheesy breads into the oven to cook for 12 minutes. Our sauce and bolognese is ready. I put the spinach in there. That is now. Uh, incorporated into the sauce. Um, I'm going to have another taste. You can see how thick it is. Yes, I'm dripping it on the floor. Whoops. Mmm. It's magnificent, okay? So my water's nearly boiling. I'm going to get the pasta in for that. And then I'm uh, I'm a dish up. Okay, got you turned around to my hob. This is uh, not on the heat, but uh, I put the lid on so it stays hot. I've turned it off, but this stuff takes about three minutes. Ah, chuck it in. Oh, there's a sizzle, oh, the sizzle, the shizzle, the sizzle. Get it in there. Okay, dokily. About three minutes those pasta takes, that's all it takes, it doesn't take long at all because it's already, uh, it's, it's fresh, all that jazz. Check them out, lovely, looking good. Linda! This is Linda, um, if uh, none of you have met Linda, this is Linda. She's, uh, she's good to me. I'll have to call her every now and then, call Linda, okay? Because uh, sometimes she's not about and you have to call her, call Linda. And then she'll uh, she'll come and uh, help you out with what you need help with. So let's call Linda together. <laughs> Are you ready? <gasps> Linda! There she is, okay. <laughs> oh, I know, I'm like a child. There you go. Linda's done her thing. She's good to me, she is old Linda. And now it's time to start dishing up. But first, actually, I'm going to switch you around this way. We got some bread to cut up, so I'm going to cut this bread up. Wonderful. Oh no, I lost a piece. Ah. Oh. oh no. Ah, oh, what was the day? Frightened bin.